It's a fantastic time to buy a Galaxy S6. Here in the States, the price has just been slashed by 100 bucks, and it's probably got the best camera you can find on an Android smartphone. Add in the excellent display and formidable feature set, and you're looking at a smartphone that finally fulfills its promise of being the next big thing. But Samsung's been trotting out that old line for three years now, and it's not selling phones like it used to. Maybe what people want is a phone that does a lot of what the Galaxy S6 does, but cheaper. A lot cheaper. Enter the OnePlus 2, the latest in a Chinese smartphone line that challenges our conception of what an affordable flagship can be in 2015. But does the OnePlus 2 bring enough game to keep pace with its South Korean competitor? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is OnePlus 2 versus Galaxy S6. Anyone who says there's no difference in smartphones these days has never put these two side by side. They have almost nothing in common, and that's apparent from the moment you pick them up. The Samsung device is sleek and slender, its glass and metal construction dominated by curves and cool to the touch. Its petite frame is built around a 5.1-inch display that's one of the best we've seen. Its Quad HD resolution offers an insanely high pixel density, and its Super AMOLED technology makes for perfect blacks, colors that pop, and a very wide range of brightness settings. The phone features an outstanding build, too, with great travel and feedback on the buttons and a fit and finish that oozes quality. The OnePlus 2 is a different beast entirely. It's larger in every dimension, nearly 3 millimeters thicker and 26% more massive, with more angular corners and a changeable back cover with options for various wooden and Kevlar finishes or the textured sandstone version seen here. It's built around a display that's larger but lower in resolution. It's Full HD rather than Quad HD with 176 fewer pixels every inch, and it's LCD instead of AMOLED. Now, its buttons may not feel as expensive as Samsung's, and it might be a little rougher around the edges, but in the hand, the OnePlus 2 exudes a similarly reassuring sense of quality. In nearly every measurable aspect, Samsung has the edge in hardware. The Exynos processor in the Galaxy S6 is more efficient than the OnePlus 2's Snapdragon 810, and you can get the Galaxy in 128 gig option if you need a lot of local storage. There are more accessories on the Samsung as well, an IR transmitter for controlling your TV, integrated NFC for mobile payments, among other things, wireless charging, high-speed wired charging, and a heart rate and blood oxygen sensor for those intense workout sessions. The OnePlus 2 doesn't pack any of those toys, but that's not to say it's bringing a knife to a gunfight. Its higher-end trim offers 4 gigs of RAM, while Samsung tops out at 3. Its USB Type-C connector is reversible for more convenient plugging in, and its battery is 29% larger. Also, see the switch? It controls the Android alert settings, so you can adjust your ringer volume without even looking at the phone, which sounds like a little thing, but it's really, really nice in practice. Each of these smartphones relies on a custom software load to enhance an Android 5.1.1 foundation, and each has its own advantages. Once again, Samsung comes to the table with more toys. Its TouchWiz UI lets you do things like run two apps side by side, its S-Health fitness application takes advantage of the built-in heart rate sensor to give you a more complete picture of your exercise routine. And the distinct look of TouchWiz can be tweaked using a baked-in theming engine. The OnePlus 2 runs on a homegrown ROM called Oxygen OS that strongly resembles stock Android while significantly improving on its interface. The OnePlus 2 offers capacitive keys, just like the Galaxy S6, but here you can program them to trigger a variety of apps and functions depending on how long or how many times you press them. On the OnePlus 2, you can deploy the notification tray just by swiping down on an empty portion of the home screen. You can wake or lock the phone with a double tap on the cover glass, fire up the torch by drawing a V, and choose your own colors for the system accent and notification LED. Also, there's a Max Audio Tuner installed out of the box to hone your headphone sounds, and you can even program a double-click of the home button to launch the camera, just like on the S6. When it comes to that camera, 
You're getting a 16 megapixel sensor on the Galaxy S6, manufactured by either Sony or Samsung, depending on batch. The OnePlus 2 is working with a 13 megapixel Omnivision sensor, also optically stabilized and bringing a slightly smaller aperture, but a slightly larger pixel size. The OnePlus 2 also brings a laser autofocus module and a dual LED flash. The S6 has neither. On the software side, the Samsung Viewfinder brings, say it with me, more features, offering a wider range of shooting modes and recording options without gunking up the interface too much. OnePlus, meanwhile, seems to stick with the derivation of the Google Camera app that's much more elementary, and it's also slower to launch and focus. As for the end result, our OnePlus 2 review unit is running pre-release software that's not the same as the version that'll land on store shelves, and we all know how big a difference software can make to a camera. So take these early impressions with a huge grain of salt. As you can see, daylight performance is often comparable as far as color and exposure, with the S6 doing a bit better on dynamic range and sharpness. Where the OnePlus 2 gets a chance to stand out a little is in HDR. It's not as authentic as the S6, but it looks like OnePlus is injecting some more color into its HDR results, maybe trying to overcome that washed out look that sometimes results. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Turn the lights down and, well, the Galaxy S6 isn't known as the king of Android camera phones for nothing. Same goes for video, where the S6 offers many more recording modes, slightly better stabilization, higher saturation, and more graceful focus adjustment too. And one more time, in case you missed it the first 10 times, this is pre-release software, folks. More sample footage coming in the full review once we're working with the final software build. In day-to-day -day use, the OnePlus 2 gets to make up some ground. The larger battery plus the lower screen resolution do it some favors in endurance. While our screen on time with the Galaxy S6 usually hovers around three hours per charge, the OnePlus 2 routinely sees us through 4.5 hours of SOT. And that's after the added power penalty of running with dual SIMs in place. Samsung does make a dual SIM version of the S6, but that's not the one we've got here. Speaking of cellular networks, as a phone, I've got few complaints with either of these. The earpieces strike a nice balance between volume and clarity, and the bottom firing speakers, while easy to accidentally block with a finger, are at least better than rear mounted ones. I do believe Samsung invested in the better driver. The OnePlus 2 speaker is a little tinny on media playback, no matter which audio mode is used. As for software responsiveness and gaming performance, well, I made a point in an editorial a number of weeks back concerning what I felt to be the overblown issue of thermal throttling in the OnePlus 2's processor, and not to belabor that point too much, but I told you so. The Snapdragon 810 may well be running very inefficiently under that casing, it probably is, but it doesn't show, and that's the important part. The OnePlus 2 doesn't get any hotter in the hand than the Galaxy S6 does, and it doesn't seem to stutter any more than the S6 either, no matter what I'm doing. In my opinion, the Samsung Galaxy S6 is, on the whole, the better device here. From display, to fit and finish, to hardware features, to storage options, to preliminary image quality, it's got the OnePlus 2 beat. But here's the thing, of course it does. Even after the recent round of discounts, the Galaxy S6 retails for an average of $300 more than the OnePlus 2. Let me say that a different way. The OnePlus 2 is $300 cheaper than the Galaxy S6. Given that massive difference in cost, the fact that this boutique handset even gets close to Samsung levels of quality and even outdoes it in some corners like battery life is a testament to OnePlus. So, if you're looking for the absolute top of the line and don't mind charging your battery pretty often, our buy recommendation on the Galaxy S6 stands. But if you want or need to buy unlocked and saving money is more important than ticking off the boxes on a feature list, the OnePlus 2 might just be the deal of the year. Just get on the list for a purchase invitation now if you want one. The buying process probably won't be what you're used to. But, 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 before you do anything, folks, remember, this is not our full review of the OnePlus 2. That's coming the week of August 17th at pocketnow.com. 
Be sure and subscribe here on the tube so you don't miss it, and check out our earlier coverage while you wait. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on Twitter. Thanks, as always, for watching, and we'll see you next time.